In the exasperating world of motoring, it's not just a question of jam tomorrow. It's jam today and every day. And the more cars there are on the roads, the longer it takes to drive to work, if you must drive to work. If you're on four wheels, you go by stops and starts. But on two wheels, the stops are fewer. A motor scooter, for instance, can weave in and out of the traffic. Some motorists look on them as a bit of a nuisance, but they often leave the highest powered car in the jam just standing. And parking a scooter is easier than parking a car. With these advantages, and its relatively low price, an average machine costs about £160, it's not surprising that the scooter population of Britain has in 10 years increased from 4,250 to 470,000. And of course, a scooter can be run on a shoestring. Most scooters will do around 100 miles to a gallon of oil and petrol mixture. The motor scooter was invented in Britain just after the First World War but the idea didn't catch on. In World War II, a special machine was produced to be dropped with paratroops into enemy-occupied territory. This miniature, called a corgi, came down by a parachute folded up in its own container. It was easily unfolded and was ready for use in a few seconds. There are very few corgis left today, but these members of the London Federation of Boys Clubs are taking part in what they call a go-bike rally on tiny machines very similar to them. Today's version of the Corgi has no gears and is very simple to drive, and it doesn't go very fast. But it's just the thing to put in the boot of the family car if you don't want to drive into a busy shopping centre. This little runabout is really halfway between a motorcycle and a scooter. The true motor scooter, however small, is in law a motorcycle, but it has three main differences. The wheels are very much smaller, it has an open frame with a foot platform, and all its working parts are completely enclosed. Phew, what a getaway! Like a motorcyclist, a learner on a scooter doesn't have to be accompanied. But this Italian scooter is fitted with a specially designed dual control to make learning to ride safer on the highway. After the Second World War, Italy went into the scooter business in a big way, and they're still the biggest producers in the world. the vast increase in scooters have come scooter clubs, more than 600 in Britain alone, with about 20,000 active members, more than a quarter of them women. This is a club outing to Box Hill in Surrey, but clubs like this will travel thousands of miles on holiday and to scooter rallies all over Europe. One advantage of getting to the top of any hill is that you can get away from the crowd and the noise. About 4,000 people who like crowds and scooters gathered at London's Crystal Palace for a mass scooter rally. And some drivers gave an exhibition of their skill at getting round obstacles.
At the end of the rally, there was a grand parade of all the scooters, many with sidecars. This is the first completely automatic British scooter. Its gears and clutch are self-operating and, say the makers, a novice with no previous experience can get on it and drive away. Today, nearly 90,000 new scooters are sold in Britain each year, and more and more of them are British made, though the United Kingdom only entered the scooter market seriously about five years ago. Top speed of a scooter is about 45 miles an hour, but they vary in size and power between 50 and 280 cc. About 40% of the scooters in Britain are owned by women. This new light scooter has been designed with women in mind, but before it reaches the public, it is man-tested. Every scooter in Britain is given a road test before it leaves the manufacturers, and four in every thousand made by this firm are also given tests equivalent to six months' wear in normal conditions. Of course, these scooters never reach the shops. Here, on a tank testing course, a new scooter is put through its paces, up a gradient of one in two over soft, loose ground to test power, road holding, steering and general strength. Rushing downhill and hitting bumps to test the suspension. Through six inches of water to make sure that all parts are sealed. If a scooter survives this sort of thing, it should stand up to mum popping round to the shops on it, even if she's a heavyweight. After the test, the scooter will be taken to pieces and examined, so that, if necessary, modifications can be made to future models. Today, scootering is another motorised sport that has become international. To this rally at London's Haringey Stadium came visitors from 13 European countries, as well as Africa and the United States and many took part in the competitions. There are still scooters, of course, without even the tiniest engine, which rely on child power or manpower. if traffic jams go on getting worse, we shall see people arriving on these too. Because if things got quite impossible, you could always tuck this sort of scooter under your arm and run. 